So it started when a little boy named Enrique Gonzalez, oh. senior, oh. was born, although I guess he probably wasn't born a senior. Senior is a very popular last name. <laughs> You'd be surprised. This guy's got to be related to you, right? I mean, <laughs> how many Gonzalez's are yeah, there? Yeah, how many could there be, really? I know we have like four Patreon supporters not related to you named Gonzalez, but this one's got to be related to you. <laughs> so he was born on a farm to a family who farmed. So being a farm person, he grew up living that farm life, being a farmer. Eventually, in 1965, his family made the move up north in search of a better life, although being a farmer in Mexico sounds pretty nice. I don't know much about it, but it, yeah, you're right. It sounds pretty nice. I know that some bad stuff happens with the cartel and farmers, but like, if you can get away from that, yeah. living on a farm in Mexico, are you kidding me? If you could destroy the entire cartel system, it'd be pretty nice. <laughs> as a farmer? As a farmer, yeah. As a humble little farmer, you could destroy the entire cartels. Uh, I'm imagining it's going to be like a siege, like Night of the Living Dead, and like all the cartel people are coming to my farmhouse, and I, and I stop them all. First of all, where's the bathroom? Okay, before we fight, everyone got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so they decided to settle in the beloved... San Fernando Valley. Wow. Right off the bat, Enrique. I guess they weren't looking for that much of a better life. Huh. <laughs> Did you know that the cartel uh, owns this podcast, which is recorded in the San Fernando Valley? Oh, no. We, um, <laughs> we're now MS-13 production. <laughs> this has been an MS-13 <laughs> production. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Um, so right off the bat, which by the way, is not the cartel. I don't want the MS 13 yeah, yeah, coming yeah, yeah, after yeah, us yeah. quite literally. I just said the words, <laughs> words and numbers. Yeah. Letters said, and numbers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. THX 138 is going to come out <laughs> <laughs> right off the bat. Enrique and his four brothers all got jobs working in restaurants to keep the family afloat. And also they went to Van Nuys high school, Oh wow. but his brothers eventually drifted out of the food industry. One of them got an art degree and ended up working at JPL as a quality assurance technician. Oh, cool. And the other three, seemed to have gotten jobs working for MGM. All right. But Enrique stayed in the food world. He was working as a cook at a bar named Puerto Vallarta. And for a while, it seems he was also a cook at Corky's in Sherman Oaks. Oh, really? Okay. Which Corky's has so much lore yeah. <laughs> around it. Like Billy Joel once yeah. played the piano here. <laughs> the owner of Vallarta was a cook here. And now it's an abandoned yeah. used car lot. It's going to be a Chick-fil-A soon. Oh, God. So he was wary of getting into the world of cooking because he was afraid that if people saw him with an apron on, they would say he was gay. Okay. But lucky for us, he got over that homophobia and the homophobia of apparently everybody who goes into a restaurant. And in 1974, he had saved up enough money to open his own club called La Cabana. Ooh. And he hated it. <laughs> he hated the late nights. He hated the rowdy clientele. Uh, much to Enrique's relief, the place burned down. Oh, hmm, wow. Interesting. And instead of rebuilding it, he just rented out the building to somebody else to suffer. And he used that money to open up his dream. A meat market in Van Nuys. Hell oh, yeah. Oh, Greg. I mean, right behind being a farmer in Mexico, meat a market. meat market in Van Nuys, Greg. A butcher? Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Oh, my God. Living that Marty life? <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. It sounds pretty cool. It does sound pretty cool. Yeah. I kind of like, I, I'm I'm very squeamish about like surgery and that sort of, like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I know they said, Danny, you want to come down to UCLA and watch the surgery tonight? Yeah. Uh, I don't like that, but I feel like I could have been a good butcher. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. that. I kind of like the mutilating of I mean, it's, meat. <laughs> it's the, the the Venn diagram, the middle of the two things that you love, which is animals and food. And the consumption thereof. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the little gray area. Oh, I could be an exotic animal meat butcher. <laughs> a bobcat meat, Lyle Lyle crocodile. This, so it was a meat market in Van Nuys. Cool. The dream. Yeah. So in 1984, but I also saw 1985, Carniceria Vallarta, named after the bar he first worked in when he came to town, Puerto Vallarta Bar, opened for business. Uh, I found two addresses of where this original one might have been. One is 13302 Victory, which could be it because while that's no longer a Vallarta Carnis Carniceria or Carniceria? Carniceria is Carniceria. A, it's a way I've always said it. Which uh, I don't practice Carniceria. It, right now, it's it's a Vallarta fish restaurant. Oh, so okay. it's like, it's Vallarta, but it's just a restaurant. So I feel like that could be it. Uh -huh. But the problem is that's more Valley Village than Van Nuys, but maybe that used to be Van Nuys. Yeah, yeah. But the second maybe more likely one is at 6807 Woodman, which is Van Nuys, but it's now a Panad... Here's another one. Panaderia or Panaderia? I always had Panaderia. Panaderia. I don't practice Panaderia. <laughs> um, it's a Panaderia, okay. a you know, bakery for... 
people who can't pronounce it as, uh, <laughs> as eloquently as, as I can. <laughs> it's where me and Melissa actually got drinks and pastries last Christmas morning. And oh, we, really? we walked around with them. It was really nice. And th- so, but, I mean, both those places used to be Vallarta's. Right. It's just a matter of which one was the first Vallarta. Mm, mm-hmm. But back in the day, Carniceria Vallarta yeah. was a small little butcher shop that focused on selling the cuts of meat that you'd find in Mexico to cater to the Mexican-American population of Van Nuys, who depended on little places like this to get the sort of food they were used to that weren't being sold in the mainstream markets at the time, which is crazy because it was 1985 in Los Angeles and there wasn't a supermarket catered directly to Mexican people in a huge city that's been that, a large part Mexican for yeah, 200 years. Yeah, that was once Mexico, yeah. It's uh, it's weird, but there was nothing just except for these little stores. Reagan era. Come oh, on. Spiro Agnew, am I right? <laughs> You'll get it later. Uh, who is Reagan's vice president? <laughs> I, yeah. A jelly bean? Uh, I don't Lady remember. Bird? I always it's Ladybird. I always think it's that super white guy who got no, told. No, Reagan's vice president was a super white guy. Who's the? Who was I president? Jerry Lewis? No, Dan Quayle was running for president. He was never a vice president. And you, sir, are no JFK. I really wish you hadn't said that. So funny. Uh, so the carniceria was yeah. successful. And after saving up some more money, Enrique opened up a few more carnicerias. But in 1990, the weird void, the Mexican food market in LA that we were just talking about dawned on him. Why isn't there a supermarket for Latinos? Yeah. Next question, why aren't I opening a supermarket for <laughs> Latinos? So that year, 1990, he opened up the very first Vallarta supermarket in an old Park Lane market in Van Nuys, which appeared to be at 13051 Victory Boulevard, which is also now Valley Village-ish. That's if the store number system on their website is the number in which they are open. The sequential number? Yeah, yeah, but I also saw that the one that just became a 99 cent store across from Balboa Park on Victory and Woodley used to actually be a Park Lane market, so maybe it oh. was that one. Okay. So there's a lot of uh, mystery behind where the first one was. Yeah. So one of these was the first fire at the supermarket. So the goal here was to address the needs of LA's Latino population that other grocery stores were not. That meant decorating in a more Mexican style, but it also meant the actual products. Two things important to a Mexican kitchen is meat and produce. So fire yeah. supermarkets had to deliver on both those fronts. Enrique already had the meat part down. He's Mar- he's, he's Mexican Marty. Yeah. Uh, Mar- Martin. Martin. No, that's French. So he had the meat market already, so he knew how to do that. He was offering types of meats you'd use in Mexican cooking, but now he had to bring in the vegetables and fruits that you need, your tomatillos, mm-hmm. etc. I couldn't think of more. <laughs> uh, maybe a mango, I don't know. Uh, and like how I... Cilantro. Cilantro. I was going to jump in and say cilantro and pretend like I was really smart and cultured, but... <laughs> Have you ever tried uh, cilantro? Cilantro. And like how I've been switching between using the word Mexican, Latino, not just Mexican taste, but also Central and Southern American cuts of meat right. and vegetables as well, and also the right spices and seasonings he needed to have. They offered prepared foods as well, and pan dulce, which you wouldn't find in a Ralph's. They also sold the Mexican versions of American products, like laundry detergent and stuff like that, because of the slight differences in the packaging and the product. It was more familiar to the Mexican, Central, Southern American customers who, yeah, I could get tied at Ralph's or whatever, but this one looks a little more familiar. This yeah. one looks better. This Coke is in a bigger glass <laughs> bottle. And obviously it was successful. The market and that neighborhood especially was literally starved for this sort of food. So before long, it was time to open a second location. And for this, his four brothers and his sister all quit their jobs wow. and joined him in the Vallarta business. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, not just that, his uncles also. So in all, he had about 20 of his relatives running the two stores with him. Pretty cool. Uh, in these early days, they apparently used to offer free rides home with your groceries because a lot of their customers had to take the bus a long way to get to these two stores. It's a great service. So they offered an easier way to get home, which is like a, but would they go inside your home and put it all in your refrigerator (laughs) for you? Can you also cook all the stuff? (laughs) Also, we have a spare bedroom. Could you guys like live here and take care of our kids when we're at work? I love the idea of like giving people a ride home that had to take the bus. That's a slippery slope. (laughs) So they also became known for their world famous carne asada, which I have mentioned many times on this show. Whenever Alberto has one of his birthday barbecues, it's always the carne asada from Vallarta. It's so good. It's delicious and it's spiced with a special secret blend that I have heard rumors is sunny delight. (laughs) (laughs) It's such a big deal that they now build themselves as home of the original carne asada, which seems grand. Uh, (laughs) Okay. Yeah. We slaughter the first cow (laughs) here at Vallarta. But the success just kept on coming. They kept expanding throughout the 90s, including their sim 
Delmar location at 13820 Foothill Boulevard, which was the first to have an on-site restaurant, tortilleria, and bakery. But they got so many requests for one in the West Valley that in the year 2000, they opened two new locations in Canoga Park, one at 21555 Roscoe, which is now closed, and 21208 Sherman Way, which is still open. They Mm -hmm. opened those the same year. Really? And they're not even far apart. Like There were so many people in the West Valley that were like, please, I don't want you to keep driving me home with my groceries. The bus system in the Valley is so hard. Please just open one close to me. It would would save my life. What's interesting about these two is that they were the first two locations built specifically to be Vallartas. Like the other ones had just moved into older buildings. Yeah. And Enrique's brother with the art degree, Miguel, helped design the look of them to be both modern, but also reminiscent of buildings in Jalisco and down in Mexico. Uh, And that's really kind of all there is history-wise with Vallarta. They have 53 locations now throughout Southern California, but I really think it is a a more of a valley. Like, they're outside the valley, but I think they're more valley-centric. I I never knew of, because I don't spend a lot of time in South LA, so I know, I think that there's some there... But because it's so spread out and the valley sort of can be compact, in at least in my brain, it's such oh, like you mean a, the place that's bigger than most of New York City? It's pretty compact. Down. Um, the good part. <laughs> Don't come at me with your <laughs> with your measuring stick contest. <laughs> but they just seem more concentrated in the valley because we're in the bowl at the moment. Yeah, the yeah. Bowl. It's it's more self contained. Sure, pretty big I mean, in the valley. It, Everything's bigger in the valley. I don't, I don't know if the valley has the word self contained in the dictionary, but okay, sure. <laughs> we don't have much of a dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're very conscious about being eco friendly as well, trying to make sure that one third of all their waste goes to composting and recycling sites. And also they try to be as energy efficient as possible. During the pandemic, they started offering online ordering that you could pick up in store. Mm -hmm. And they also have the Gonzalez Family Foundation, which gives money to hospitals, after school programs and community programs and stuff like that, which I feel like you should get a cut of. Uh, You're part of the Gonzalez family. (laughs) You can make me work? No, they should be giving it to you. Yeah, And by association, I should be getting, because I get half of all your earnings. We have that on paper. I don't know why you signed that contract. (laughs) In blood. uh, I didn't ask you to do that. I gave you a Head. Yeah, <laughs> you weren't even bleeding at the time. You, you cut yourself. You took out it. a ceremonial knife, and I. Where did you get this? I didn't know you can speak Latin. Um, there's also the mafia rumors we've all heard. Have you heard those? Uh, no. Maybe it's more of a valley urban legend, but there's always been mafia, much like this podcast being owned by the MS-13, which <laughs> everyone believes. There's always been cartel mafia, like, oh, Vallarta's run by the okay. mafia, like secretly run by the yeah. mafia. Well, they're doing the a great job. <laughs> Keep those prices down, am I right? Because there's a lot of fronts that are like, oh, you don't care what like the fronts- Conrad's flowers? Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> like, you don't care what the actual business is. You just want to filter money. But like, if Vallarta, if it's true and Vallarta's run by the mafia, they're doing a great job at running a supermarket. Like, maybe you should, you don't have to be in the mafia anymore. Maybe it's time to pivot the whole message <laughs> of the cartel. Um, instead of cocaine and meth, how yeah. about tomatillos and cilantro? And piñatas. Yeah, piñatas. <laughs> yeah, how about instead of piñatas filled with meth? Yeah. Tomatillos. <laughs> Cilantro, but it won't come out. You still have to dig your hand. You yeah. have to get a little kid to dig their hands and pull it out. Well, it's like a it's like a shaker of yeah. herbs, but it's it's a pinata. Uh, there's I found no basis for any of the. Obviously, there's not going to be oh, like. Are you sure? Did you look hard enough that there wasn't any truth to that? Greg, I went down to Jalisco, <laughs> and I said, does anyone know where a gringo can meet the cartel? I had an eagle with a snake in its mouth on my forearm, and I was just like, hey, everybody, I, I have some questions about the Mexican mafia. So there's, I found no basis, and these, it's also probably a racist rumor. I don't know. So yeah. here's to you, Vallarta. Let this love letter be our ticket to a lifetime supply of carne asada. I can't imagine. And I'm trying to go vegan, and I still would like, okay, well, that would change my mind. Well, there's sunny delight on it. <laughs> it cancels it out somehow. 